to its traffic. In previous video, we have already discussed till MAC address. In this video, we will discuss about networking devices. The device which are required to establish a computer network are known as networking devices. There are different type of networking devices. Some of them are network interface card in short NIC. It is a hardware component that is required to connect a computer to a network. Without NIC, we cannot uh, connect a computer to a network. Network interface card are also known as LAN adapters. And some network interface card also can connect the devices wirelessly. Uh, for example, uh, Wi-Fi. Some network interface card are internal which is already inbuilt with the motherboard and some are external that we can connect through USB port or some uh, parallel port. Here are given some NIC or network interface card. First one is LAN card. Through that LAN we can connect a computer. Second one is wireless NIC card. Through that we can connect computer wirelessly. And second one is USB to LAN. And third one is I think Bluetooth. So these are some examples of network interface card. Hub and switch. Hub is a networking device that connect other computer in networking devices together. When signal traverses a long distance, strength of the signal decreases gradually. In such situation, we need hub. Hub repeat the signal and increase the speed of the signal. Here, traverse mean travel. When the information travel from one computer to another computer, if the distance is larger than the limit, then we need hub to amplify the signals. And also, we need hub. To connect multiple devices to the network and switch it is also a networking device and same as hub but it is smartest one a switch uh, switch are generally more intelligent than hub a switch is multiple device that is very similar to hub but unlike hubs switch maintain some routing information about the other network devices in internal network a switch can read the destination address of incoming data with the help of routing information. Next networking device is hub. A hub is a networking device that connect multiple computers together in a network. And this is required, also required for amplify the signal of information or data in a network. Like when we connect computers in a network and transmitting data over cables, there are some limitation of distance uh, for example a two-state pa pair cable can transmit data only over 100 meter so when the distance increase more than 100 meter we need to amplify the signal for that purpose also we required hub to amplify the signals that's why you see black color boxes in cable tv wires to amplify the signals and switch it is the it is smartest than the hub in hub just we can transmit the data and connect multiple devices but switch it also contain some routing information means the destination computer's address and it send directly data to the destination computer as in figure 1.2 you can see in your book so this figure here it's given example of an hub this one hub and switch are look similar but switch have more features than a hub so here you can see here 24 ports are there so that each port we can connect one single computer or laptop or any other device and also we can connect an wireless router so that wirelessly we can connect to the switch or hub and we can transmit the bit data between computers now next our networking device is Router. Oh, generally we need the RJ45 pins to connect the computers in a LAN port or in a router. And I think most of the new laptop does not have a LAN port. We need the USB to LAN cable or we can connect to internet to that laptop through Wi-Fi. Then router. 
it previous section we have already discussed about hub and switch they are basically used to form a computer network by interconnecting many networking devices together like computer printer etc but a router is not similar to hub or switch a router is another type of networking device which are used to interconnect two or more heterogeneous computer network mainly router switch and hub they used to connect the computer within the same network same internal network but router it is used to connect two or more network together a router send information from one computer to another then router reads the information and notes the destination address then send it to that destination computer a router also can divide a network into sub network means we can divide a complete network into some smaller smaller part so then easily we can connect between the computer we can uh, communicate between the computers for example here here we have two networks network a and b network a is connected uh, by switch a and network b is connected by switch b and both the switches are connected to the router so router will easily communicate between the uh, through routers we can easily communicate between from one network to another network access point this is required to connect uh, to create a wireless network for example when you take a wifi connection or when you take broadband connection you are getting an wireless router or wifi router that actually provide you a access point through which you can connect multiple devices to that router and you can access the internet or you can also access some internal uh, files which stored in the router for accessing computer in that router or in that device we need ssid means a uh, access point broadcast service when access point installed in an area normally access point broadcast the service set identifier name it means when you turn on your hotspot in your mobile or suppose you already had a broadband connection when you turn on your wifi router then it will broadcast an ssid means service set identifier name which is your wifi name that will display to the all the devices that can be connected through wifi and through them uh that device can be connect to your network by providing a password and we required password to make our uh, network more protected if we don't set any password to our network then anyone can connect to our network and can uh, access the data and some ad uh, ssid which does not require any password they allow the other user to connect to their network automatically without typing the password because they don't have any password only in figure 1.2 you can see how an access point is connected so 1.2 i have already shown you again i am showing you here you can see within the switch through lan cable uh, three computers and one laptop is connected and with that switch only one access point or wifi router is connected and through that uh, access point we can connect to that uh, other computers through our laptop by using wifi so this how access point work or we can also say the access point as an wireless antenna but here we'll have username and password or ssid ssid means the name of the wifi and password which you provide in setting then communication protocol when we establish communication between two computers the computer must follow some rules that rules are known as protocol a set of rules which are required to be followed while communicate between two computers is known as protocols here uh, discussing about some important protocols which are required in network their first one is tcp tcp is an communication protocol which is used to establish communication between computers network 
when data is sent over a network tcp shows computer divide those data into a series of packets and send those packet to the destination and the tcp only reassemble the data when they all receive in that destination computer means at the same time while you are sending a picture or video uh, that complete video or picture cannot be sent at uh, at the same time so this picture or video will be divided into some smaller smaller parts that parts are known as packets and this one by one it will send to the destination computer when the destination computer will receive all the packets again it will reassemble or join these packets together and make the file and so it to the destination computer and ip it's mainly to assign a unique number to the computer which are connected to the network the primary responsibility of internet protocol is to deliver packets from source host to a destination host on the ip address present in a packet tcp ip broadly used for protocol for communicating computer over the network so by tcp we can only breaking the files and again reassemble the files but we need the address also to that to the computer to whom we have to send the file that address is the ip so these two protocols are mainly used for communication in, on a computer network and these two are pop and smtp these two for sending and receiving emails pop post office protocol this is used for receiving email messages and smtp simple mail transfer protocol this one is used for sending emails and one more is there imap that one can do both sending also and receiving also and we have one more protocol http that is uh, used to transmit hypertext files or hypertext documents over internet or over the network the difference between http and https are when we send information through http that is open and which can be read by anyone over the network but if we send information through https where s stands for secure that information will be encrypted and this information can read only by the destination computer other computer or other user cannot read that information that's why when you visit any website if that that website address is started with https then you will know that your website is encrypted the information which you are sending there and if in that website on http http there is no s then that website is open so you should not submit uh, you should not submit your personal information over that type of websites normally all the banking or financial website are secured with https here is an example if you visit any website if you see http directly then it is an unencrypted website so you should not uh, submit your sensitive information like that websites if the address is https then you can send uh, your information but still you have to verify whether that website is uh, genuine or not ftp through http http we have some limitations we cannot send a uh, very big files even if we send a big file there might be a uh, cancellation of uh, losting of packets during the transmit data but uh, to overcome these problems we have another protocol that one is ftp this is mainly used for sending files mainly the web developers or application developer when they want to make any updates on their websites they edit the file edit the web page or when they have to upload any videos or any documents on their website through ftp they are doing that they will edit their particular that uh, page and through ftp they will upload on the server and it will reflect to the website ftp also there are different types ftp sftp ftps etc here i think s stands for secure only and to connect uh, to use ftp service you have uh, you can use this application filezilla ftp voyager win scp core ftp smart ftp etc and ftp filezilla smart ftp they are the best friend of the web developers 
because always they have to transmit data between their own computer and server so through FTP they don't have to open the third party website easily they can transmit the files between their server and the computers and here are some basic network commands now suppose you want to check the speed or of your network or you want to check whether a website is working or not then you can type this command ping then the host target host suppose you want to check the address of uh, you want to check google's whether you can connect with google or not then you can type ping google.com or ping www.google.com then you will see uh, the output is this way if your computer is connected to a network you will see the time that is required to connect your computer to the google and even you will see the address of uh, ip address of google like this way and the next command is ip config it will provide you the ip address of your computer uh, here it's showing that after typing ip config it's showing the ipv6 addresses fe8080 like that something and ipv4 addresses 172.16.1.186 subnet marks 255.255.252.0 and default gateway is 172.16.01 so this way you will get the information about your machine and host name if you don't know your computer then you can type host name and you will get the name ARP it uh, this command will give you the MAC address of your computer and here are the main points which we have discussed in this chapter PAN personal area network used to connect the computer within a small area or for example in within a room LAN to connect the computer in a small geographical area for example a building man to connect the computer within a large geographical area for example within a city when to connect the computer all over the world and i see it is a device that is used to connect the com uh, computers to a network access point to connect uh, computers to a network wirelessly we need access point host it is the name of the computer which is connected to the network uh, IP address this is the unique address of a computer when they are connected to the network Mac the manufacturers unique number that are assigned to the device while they are manufacturing router it is used to route the information route the information to a network and protocol they are the rules that are that has to be followed while we communicating between two net computers encryption to convert the data into an unreadable format so that unauthorized reader cannot read it and ARP these are already here ARP to resolve uh, resolve the addresses of MAC addresses of computer DHCP it is used to assign dynamic IP addresses to a network SSID the name of Wi-Fi network and in next video we'll discuss about the question answers so stay tuned thank you for watching see you in a new video till then take care and bye